Didn't see you there. Welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brandon Rainey. Let's get right to the history. Today we'll be talking about the history of Gloria Conyers Hewitt, a famous African American woman who is a mathematician. In this video, we will be covering six topics about this mathematician, Gloria Conyers Hewitt. The topics we will be covering today would be her background information, first one. Her second one, growing up and her lifestyle, growing up to the college point. Third topic, her education. Fourth topic, her career path. Her fifth topic, we are will talk about her awards and achievements she's gained over the years of her life. And the last topic, we'll cover the last years leading up to her retirement. Hope, hope you enjoy this video. Let's get started. Alright, let's go over her background information. Gloria Connors Hewitt was born on October 26, 1935 in Sumter, South Carolina. She was born to the parents of Amet and Cronella. Um, Amet and Cronella had four children. Three of them were boys and one of them was the youngest child Miss Hewitt um, she had three older brothers and she was the only daughter and the youngest now her parents thrived on education they were both college graduates they believed that for African American people um, college is the way to go to to make it in life. They believed education was strictly important and they pushed that belief on their children. Gloria Hewitt's father, Amet, was a printer and her mother was a elementary school teacher. Um, even though they were college graduates, they made very little money, but they considered themselves middle class when they were in between low and middle in, in reality but they did consider themselves middle class. Let's talk about Gloria's life growing up and her education. She started out her education at Moore Elementary School where it was a public school in her hometown. Now this wasn't the best time in her life. She got bullied. She didn't like public school. Um, yeah, and she, in an interview she told us two math stories that happened during her time in elementary school which we'll go over right now. Um, in second grade in elementary school, she forgot to do her arithmetic math homework. And when the teacher asked her, hey, where's the math homework? Uh, she responded that she didn't do it. So the teacher got the holy paddle and smacked her hands for a long time until she was sat back down. Uh, I could imagine that hurt so much, that hurt really bad. Uh, not sure. Um, it was back in the time where paddling students was okay for teachers. <laughs> so she paddled Gloria Hewitt for forgetting her math homework. And Gloria told uh, us in a re uh, past interview that she rarely forgot homework from now on, especially in that school. <laughs> so she also did homework. She didn't forget. She didn't want to get paddled again. <laughs> okay. Um, the second math story she grew up loving her fractions. She was really good at fractions. She was really good at doing them. And she used that as a, as a golden opportunity to stop getting bullied by the bigger girls. Um, she would give them answers to their homeworks in exchange for not bullying them. She was trying to be friends with them, but at the same time making a business deal at the same time <laughs> but so she was good at fractions she did her homework as, as fractions and she gave answers to stop getting bullied by the bigger girls those were the two big instances that happened in her elementary school life during Gloria's stay at uh, elementary school she expressed her concerns to her parents about not liking public elementary school not liking her school so her parents made the tough choice of sending her to a private academy, a boarding school, 
called Mather Academy. So her parents worked uh, for little money and they sent her off to boarding school because they strived on education. They thought it was important. So they were willing to pay for Gloria's boarding school. So Gloria was sent to boarding school till the age of 17. Um, so yeah, it was a bullying school for uh, black boys and girls. Uh, there was no stories of her getting bullied. I think she did all right at Mather Academy, a better lifestyle than her elementary school. So uh, her parents sent her off to Mather Academy to the age of 17. So her time at Mather Academy, um, there was only two math classes. One was algebra and one was geometry. Those were the only two math classes uh, she had to take and she did relatively well but not enough to the passion level she started at but she she did well in those classes and she attended Mather Academy to age 17 then at age 17 is where she went to college at Fisk University um, when she took the placement test for Fisk University uh, she did really poorly um, she was pretty surprised about the results herself, but she did really poorly. She was labeled as a slow student. Um, she didn't do well in the math section. She didn't do well in the English section. Uh, so she failed her placement test pretty bad, but she still attended Fisk University. Um, during her time at Fisk University, she met a man named Lee Lorch, who was the faculty member over there. He was the person who kickstarted her her fate as a famous mathematician. If that makes sense. I'll explain that later. Lee Lorch. He was a white Jewish man uh, at Fisk University who confronted Gloria Hewitt into taking calculus class. Now she didn't know what calculus was. She had no knowledge of calculus. She even uh, considered by taking calculus by bringing a calculus book home with her during the break. Uh, and it took her two weeks to do one problem, uh, a calculus problem, uh, to fully understand and fully solve it. And once she did that, she felt a uh, unique accomplishment towards that, and she fell in love. So she started taking calculus at Fisk University. Now, Lee Lorch was an, uh, an interesting man. Um, he was a white man who strongly believed in anti-racism and strongly believed in anti-segregation for all people. He believed in equality. He believed one for all. Um, that's how he got fired from his previous jobs. He vocally represented that he was not a racist man so that's why he keeps getting fired from job to job to job and he even gets fired later on at Fisk University which we'll talk about later but he is a very vocal person about human rights um, which makes him a great man and which makes uh, Gloria Hewitt successful uh, he really cared about here, which we'll explain afterwards. Um, as I said, uh, after a year at Fisk University, uh, Gloria dropped out of sophomore year. She got married and had a child uh, and stopped taking college. And her parents were also involved in her uh, success from convincing her to go back to college despite getting married, despite having a child, and they even offered to take care of her own child uh, in return of going back to college. Now Gloria went back to college at sophomore as a sophomore and she had to choose a major and this is where she chose mathematics. This is the start of her uh, path to great math being a great mathematician. That's when she chose mathematics as her major. Um, as, a, as a career choice, as a thought, 
she decided she wanted to be a high school teacher. Um, back in her boarding academy, she said a nurse, and now she's saying a high school teacher. And later on, she's going to decide to not be a high school teacher. We'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, she chose those paths, and she eventually uh, climbed to junior, then senior, and she finally graduated from Fisk University with mathematics. And at that point, Lee was fired from uh, Fisk University for expressing his anti-racism again. Um, and he went on to a different university, which was the University of Washington. Uh, since he took pride in Gloria, he offered Gloria a graduate school over at the University of Washington. Um, Gloria, of course, accepted and went down to Washington to get her master's degree. In 1960, she graduated with her master's degree and even climbed even higher and went on to get a PhD at that same University uh, of Washington. And that's where the milestones, that's where she made her milestone. She became the third woman, African-American woman to earn a PhD in mathematics, all thanks to the help of her parents and Lee for inviting her over to that university and pushing her to strive to the top. Not only did she uh, get her PhD at that university, she also kick-started her career off in 1961 at that same university. That's where she was offered a position as an assistant professor where she began working in 1961. That's the start of where her career starts. That's where it's stabled at. That's where she goes the rest of her life at, is at University of Washington. Her success grew. Her promotions were going by at year after year. She was growing up to the corporal ladder. She was going up and up. She was getting famous. She was getting awards. She was getting promoted to... She started as an assistant professor and was getting promoted all the way to the top. Let me read a list of promotions that she has accomplished. She started as an assistant professor in 1961. Then she got promoted to an associate professor in 1966. Then eventually to a full professor in 1972. Then she became a member of executive council from 1972 to 1975. Then she was a GRE committee member, the people that write the test. She did that from 18, uh, 1984 to 1986. Then her, her success even grew. She was almost now at the top. She got associate chair of the Department of Mathematical Science in 1993. Then eventually became the main chair of the Mathematical Science Department in 1995. And she was, that's where she stopped growing was in 1995 when she was the chair. During those years, she grew among the ranks, she got awards, and she became the chair. That's, and she later retires four years later. So we talked about her education and career path. Let's get on to her awards and achievements. Of course, she achieved the milestone of becoming the third African American woman to earn a PhD in mathematics. That's impressive. Um, four years after she got her PhD, she got a prestigious award. Um, let me... The, the reward she received was the National Science Foundation Postdoctorate Science Faculty Award. Um, it's considered as a prestigious award. Uh, that was pretty much her biggest award she's received. Um, she was recommended for a merit from the dean, but he declined it in suspicion of her sex and race being a part of her succession. Um, so he, she didn't receive a merit, but that was the most prestigious award was mentioned. Let's get into the last topic of her last years. So, in 1995, she was the chair of the Mathematical Science Department uh, for four years. So, from 1995 to 1999, she served as the chair at the University of Washington. At 1999, she retired from that position and is living peacefully as a retired woman. Um, so, she worked at 
University of Washington from 1961 all the way to 1999. So that's uh, 61, 71, 81, 91. So she worked there for 38 years before retiring. Um, yeah, so today she is still alive. She is still living peacefully. And she is a remarkable woman. So that was the story of Gloria Conyers Hewitt. I want to thank you for watching the video. And before we end, I'm going to have a special surprise. Today, we are going to have an exclusive interview with the lady herself, Gloria Conyers Hewitt. Thanks for coming out today. <laughs> Give her a hand, guys. <laughs> yeah, Gloria, come on out. Yeah. Um, she was supposed to be here. Uh, this is awkward. Um, well, that would have made a great video if she came today. Uh, instead, I'm going to leave you with some inappropriate ending music. Well, thanks for watching. This has been the history of Gloria Conyers-Hewitt. See you next time. Bye!